It literally smells like a Barbie doll. All right, so today we're going to be talking about November Raves and Rejects. It has been one of those days, major adulting day. I've been doing taxes, healthcare plan finding, bills, all the fun stuff. So I'm excited to just talk about makeup for a few minutes. This jacket keeps squeaking. ASMR. I'm going to have my Raves and Rejects playlist linked down below if you want to watch past month's videos, but let's start out with Raves like usual. These are the products I've been loving the past couple months. Don't think I did one last month. Can't remember. If you enjoy Raves and Rejects, don't forget to give this a thumbs up. So I want to say in my Raves and Rejects video, maybe two or three months ago, I mentioned that I was testing out an oil that I thought I really liked, but I wanted to keep using for a while before I mentioned it. And that is this one. It has made the cut. It is dripping everywhere because it's wet. This is the Fresh Seaberry Skin Nutrition Cleansing Oil. I actually have two cleansing oils. So this is the other oil rave. I've been basically switching off between these two oils. It's all I've been using to remove my makeup. Oh, I didn't even say what this one is. This is Paul's Choice Perfect Cleansing Oil. I feel like I have to say this in every video because there are new people. Sorry if it's a broken record, but since being on Accutane, Accutane basically strips the oil of your skin. So my skin is no longer combo or oily. I am very dry. I've been using a lot of products and I'm actually going to be having my skincare routine coming at the, I think, Earlier I said the two month point, but I'm gonna do a two month check-in and then at the three month point, which will be halfway through my Accutane process, that's when I'll be really talking about all of the products I've been using for really dry skin while on Accutane because I feel like three months is a good time period to really test everything out and make sure it's really helping with everything. Where was I going with that? Oh, since being on Accutane, skin is very dry, so the Neutrogena makeup remover wipes that I typically use to remove my makeup just don't feel the best, like, tugging on my skin. Those I like to use as, like, a final step of just taking off my eye makeup, whatever these don't remove, but both of these are pretty friggin' bomb for removing everything. I'm talking full-on foundation, eye makeup, waterproof mascara. There's very little left over that I have to use the Neutrogena wipes for. But I've tried a lot of different cleansing oils. I think the one that I find most similar to these is the Neutrogena one in the blue bottle. I really like that one. It's very lightweight. Both of these are super lightweight oils. I hate those cleansing oils that feel just too thick and heavy and you can feel like the greasy oily residue afterwards. Paul's Choice you get four fluid ounces and the Fresh you get five fluid ounces so even though this bottle looks bigger you actually get more product in the Fresh one. They don't irritate my skin and they leave your skin with this not tight but you know the look of those products that leave you with that really glowy, I don't want to say tight but almost tight without being drying. Like I love how my skin looks right after I use these. They both give you that forehead glow you know. I recommend both these. They're super similar, both bomb. If I was going to repurchase one, I don't know man. I almost am leaning towards the Polish Choice one. They're both great. This is like a little sneak peek into the skincare routine slash products video that will be coming at the three month point but after that this is another rave of the month. This is the Sarah of a hydrating facial cleanser. This thing is so bomb. I talked about this in my Sephora Ulta haul video. I've been using this every single day, morning and night. I'll use it in the shower. I'll just like put a pump in my hand before I get in the shower. I should probably just get a second bottle and put it in there, but this thing is freaking huge. This is from the drugstore. You can get it at Ulta, Walgreens, CVS any drugstore. It's around 15 bucks. You get a shit ton of product. You get 12 fluid ounces. Like this is a giant bottle right here. As I was in the shower using this this morning, I was trying to think of the way I was going to describe this to you guys because it has a really unique consistency to it. And the best I can do is that it's like a mix of a face wash and a lotion almost. It has this very creamy, lotiony feel to it, but it doesn't feel heavy. And as soon as you rinse it off your skin, your skin just feels so moisturized. I feel like this really helps to prep my skin in the morning before makeup because it just gives your skin this like coating almost. It just really helps with my dryness and everything. And this has ceramides and hyaluronic acid in it. The ingredients in here are really great. It says for normal to dry skin. So, I mean, I wish I knew about this when I was oily just because it's that bomb of a face wash. I always go in with a toner or some kind of, you know, product on a cotton pad after. And when I do that, after I use this face wash, there is literally nothing on the cotton pad and that's rare. Usually there's, you know, some kind of like tan thing coming off on your cotton pad and this just takes everything off. If there is one makeup product, especially in the last couple weeks that I've been talking about nonstop. I feel like you guys can probably guess this. It is the Ciate Summer Love, is it Summer Love or Summer Glow? I can never remember. Summer Love blush and I dug my nail into it so that was fantastic. There's like a huge freaking pothole right there. I'm wearing this blush right now. I've been wearing this blush 
every single day. I kid you not. Since I purchased this blush, I have not want to reach for anything else. The thing I love about this is the formula. It's not super pigmented. It's more of like a subtle blush, but it still gives you that flush of color. Super easy to blend out. It just really effortlessly blends with the other products on your face, your bronzer, your highlight, everything. It just kind of like smooths everything out and blends everything together. It does have a slight glow to it, hence the name. I personally love that. I don't find it to be shimmery to the point where it just emphasizes all of my texture and pores and everything. I just find it to be really flattering. I am definitely going to be picking up other shades this because the formula, this is like one of my favorite blush formulas I've found so far. If you want something that's subtle and just super easy to work with and blend out, definitely would recommend this. Also, the packaging is just adorable. A little thing with stars on it, I mean we match. All right, so this next thing is technically not a beauty or makeup product, but kind of, let me just show you it. So this is actually one of my favorite Amazon purchases I've ever made. I'm like so excited showing you guys this right now. So this is a travel makeup bag. Let me get it in here and not just any travel makeup bag this thing is so freaking cool i have some stuff in it because i still have stuff from oregon in here and then i'm leaving again in like two days it is very flat and very long so it is perfect for sticking on top of your suitcase they're not even marketing it as this at all on amazon but this is like the perfect makeup bag it looks kind of semi-small because of its flatness but this thing is actually the perfect makeup bag the perfect everything bag. I can fit all my toiletries, makeup, everything in here because of all of the pockets. I also want to say this thing was like 15 bucks on Amazon. The thing that's really cool is that they have the lined inside so it's really easy to clean. This is where I would put my foundation. So I would just stick, you can fit like five foundations in here. <laughs> even though I'm probably the only person on planet Earth who travels with five foundations. But I mean, you can fit like five or six in there. This next pocket over fits brushes perfectly. You still have a ton of room. This, this zipper right here, this middle one is expandable. You can also fit a sponge in here too. On the other side, I still have some stuff in here. This one is like fully waterproof, which is awesome because all those products that you usually put in Ziploc bags or whatever that you don't want to spill, you can just put straight in here. So this is where I would put my face wash, cream, perfume, anything, anything like that that you don't want to leak all over the place. This is the brand Magic to Door, by the way. Who knows, but I'll have it linked down below along with everything else, like always. This is where it gets really exciting. So this middle section is where I've been keeping all of my makeup and I basically have been living out of this bag for the last couple weeks and I will be for like the next two months because I'm just really not unpacking everything since I've gone so much. So this flips open, you have a pocket up here. I actually just kept my jewelry and stuff in here. You get this little pouch, which this one is also has a waterproof material. And then this is where I kept all of my makeup and it's actually so deep because it goes to the right and the left. You have two slides right here where you could also stick makeup brushes. I think that's what they're kind of like intended for right there. This fits everything. I mean, it fit all of my makeup and then some. If you wanted to, it just hangs up and hooks like that. And you also have this handle so you could just hook it that way too. Whoever designed this, wonderful job. Phenomenal. Literally one of my favorite things I've ever bought off Amazon. Go Amazon. So next up, these are one of my favorite pairs of false lashes lately. These are the Ardell Faux Mink lashes. You can get these from the drugstore. False lashes are one of those things that it they just look so different on everyone's eyes because of different eye shapes and everything. Some lashes that look bomb on some people are just like above my eyebrows on me or just look ridiculous. So I personally like kind of shorter ish but still with some volume and drama in there these ones are very much cat eye kind of lashes they just give you that look because of the shape they go from shorter to longer and you have more volume on the outer half so it just kind of gives you that look i've worn these in a bunch of different videos lately i didn't want to wear them today because i wanted to be able to show you them and this is my last pack right now i need to stock up but if you just search the Tayla ardella 811 any videos that i'm wearing them will come up along with every other product you can always do that because I list everything in the description box. But the thing I really like about these lashes is the band is so thin. And typically with like the faux mink look kind of lashes, you get a thicker band just because they tend to be more dramatic and like full. And these you get a similar look, but you still have a really nice thin band. Next up is a foundation that... I'm sure you guys can guess because it wasn't mentioned in the last one because I had just recently found it right before the last Raisin Rejects, but now that I've been using it for, I want to say like a month and a half now at least, I'm ready to talk about it. 
the moment is here. So this is the CYO Long Lasting Life Proof Foundation. I have the shade 101. Quick overview of this on its own, and then I'm gonna tell you how I like to wear it. So on its own, I would say this is about medium coverage, very dewy, very moisturizing, looks so beautiful and smoothing and almost plumping. Gorgeous foundation if you like that kind of look. Also, this foundation is like six bucks around there, five, six bucks from Walgreens. CYO is exclusive to Walgreens and I get it online. So that's the deal if you wanted to wear this on its own. For me, on its own, it's not quite enough coverage and the shade 101, I love the tone of it. It has very much like a beigey kind of pinkish tone to it, which I love, but it's a tiny bit too light. So I really like mixing this in with other foundations to lighten it, give it that skin-like dewy plump kind of look or the way I really like to apply this, which I kind of accidentally discovered because my foundation one day was looking too dark, is that I'll put the kind of darker foundation, whatever I'm wearing on, and then I'll just kind of go over it with this, just on like the center of my face. So I'll put it right on my forehead, down my nose, my chin area, and kind of like around here just to brighten everything up. And it looks so beautiful that way. It just looks very fresh, looks like skin, just very flattering. And with my skin being drier, this has just looked beautiful. I actually have this on right now mixed in with the Maybelline Superstay. This is actually the old formula. I talked about this in last week's Foundation Friday video. Update if you missed that video or didn't check the description box. The old formula is way different than the new formula. Still love this one 5 billion times better than the new formula, but check out that video if you want to know my thoughts. This foundation I would pay 30 bucks for. That's how good it is to me. A bunch of you have snapped me and messaged me saying that you picked this up and you also love it. So if you tried this out, let me know what you thought of it down below because I'm always curious if you guys pick stuff up, what you think of them. My most reached for lipstick this month since I tried it out in, I think it was a Shadow and Schmooze or First Impressions, is definitely the Maybelline Gigi Hadid Tora lipstick. Tara, I still know how to say it. T-A-U-R-A, whatever. Whoops, I layered it the other day so I, the tip looks darker than it actually is. Well, let me wipe this off. All right, and the chance that I ever made a nude lipstick, this is pretty dang close to the shade I would do. If you are around my skin tone, it is so flattering because it's not too light, it's not too dark. It's almost like my exact lip color, just a little bit more cool toned, which is great because I'm always looking for a lipstick like that that will kind of cover up any foundation or whatever, you know, just like even out your lips after you put on all of your makeup. And that's what this is for me. I freaking hate the smell of Maybelline lipsticks. It's like crayon and blueberries or something mixed. Nude lipsticks look different on every single skin tone. So if you have a deeper complexion than I do, don't you know expect it to look exactly the same. I just love it. It's not too matte, it's not too creamy. It lasts pretty well on me. Like it'll last for a few hours. It's not gonna last throughout eating and stuff. It's not like a super long lasting liquid lipstick or anything. I've talked about this before fairly recently in the Extreme Coverage Foundations video, but this is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water, and I've just kind of re-fallen in love with this thing in the past few months. It's bomb underneath makeup, it's bomb over makeup, it's what I have on right now over my makeup, just to give my skin more of like a glow, add some moisture and everything back in. If you are looking dry and crepey, or if you just have a matte foundation that's just not looking great on your skin, this thing really helps, at least for me. I don't find that it breaks me out. It's silicone free, alcohol free, and oil free. The only thing I don't like about this is the smell. It literally smells like a Barbie doll. This is one of those facial sprays that I feel like actually makes a difference. I like that you can use it over and under your makeup. So those are all my rays for the month. I have three rejects here that I feel very strongly about. This first one, I literally despise. Glossier, let's talk about Glossier for a second. You guys saw I test out their boy brow in a video. This is another Glossier product that I was not into at all. So this is new by them. It's the Body Hero Oil, Daily Oil Wash is what it's called. I love the packaging of this, super cute. Glossier is one of those things to me that I really wanna like because I like their whole vibe, I like their branding, I like their packaging, and I can't tell if a lot of people like them because of that or if they actually have some really great products and I'm just not trying the right things. I've tried their lip balm, you know, and like the squeeze thing, lip salve, whatever that's called. I've tried their Body Hero and the Boy Brow, all three. I'm not into, I don't know. Let me know down below if there are some other Glossier products you think I should try out, but let me talk about this because this is the reject. So like I mentioned in the Sephora Ulta haul video, I got the Ceramidin Dr. Jart body oil that I've been really into and I wanted to just try out like an oil kind of body wash. It had really good reviews on Glossier, but a lot of people were saying that it was a very strong scent and a lot of people, it seemed like, by the reviews either loved the scent or absolutely 
hated the scent and I am definitely in the group that absolutely hates the scent. This literally smells like the most strong bathroom potpourri on the planet. Oh my god, I want to burn. I literally just almost gagged. Besides the smell, because that's obviously something that just depends on your nose and your personal preference, I don't find that this thing does anything as far as like moisture and being a body oil and a cleansing oil, whatever. I don't find it to be that moisturizing at all. The scent lingers so much to the extent that it smells like I am a bathroom walking around all day after I use this. If I use this, I can't really wear perfume because all you smell is this. It smells like a perfume on you. I just don't really feel like this does anything as far as being moisturizing or being a wash. If anything, I would call this like a shower perfume. I've used this probably 20 times at this point, 15 to 20 times. The first few times I used this, I couldn't really tell what I thought of it. And the more I used it, the more I felt like it didn't do shit. This was a major nope for me, especially for the price. Like I'll just stick with my Nivea and Olay washes. They are very moisturizing, very cleansing. Next reject of the month is also by CYO. We had a CYO rave. Here's a CYO reject. This is probably one of the worst eyeshadow palettes I've used in a long time. I did a whole video testing out CYO makeup. Oh, this is not the eyeshadow palette. I grabbed the contour kit. Where the heck is the eyeshadow palette? All right, I just dug through everything and I cannot find it. I have a rejects bin that I put products in every month to talk about and I think I accidentally put the contour kit in there instead of the eyeshadow palette. No idea where the eyeshadow palette is floating around, but I'm gonna insert a picture of it right here. Basically, they were the most chalky, not pigmented, just everything you don't want in an eyeshadow. They were pretty horrible. There are great eyeshadows from the drugstore that are a few bucks, wet and wild, little eight pan things that have been around for like a decade now. Those are great and they're like five bucks. This one is, I mean, bad. Like worse than the Claire's makeup, worse than 99.9% .9 of eyeshadows I've tried. CYO has some great foundations, but their eyeshadows and the single ones need some major work. The single ones, like the metallic ones, also not that great, very chalky. Wouldn't recommend those either. So my last reject of the month is one that just didn't work out for me. This is the Tarte Maracuja Creaseless Concealer. So many comments saying Maracuja, not Marajuka, I think I called it. <laughs> tomato tomato so i have the shade fair i tried this out in a shadow and schmooze i still have the box because i am going to be returning this because i cannot make this work for me so this is a very 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 thick concealer i mean you gotta like really put all of your effort into squeezing this out to get like a dab i've used this about three four times since filming that video and every time my under eyes just look horrible the formula of this reminds me a lot of the it cosmetics bye bye under eye, the squeeze tube one, almost exactly. It's super thick. That one also creased on me really badly, but a lot of people love that. So if you like that concealer, you might like this one. This one just really didn't work for me. My Maybelline Fit Me, it's actually right here. This one has been working great. I've been saying that I was looking for something more moisturizing and I kind of just went back to this one that I've had for forever and I love, and it's been working really well. I have it on right now. So this one is going back. So those are all my raisin rejects for November slash just since the last time I did one of these. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. By the way, on the rest of my face, for eyeshadow, I used all of the Urban Decay Naked Heat shadows. Not all of them, all of my eyeshadows are from here. Highlight, I use the Physician's Formula Natural Nude. Hourglass Diffuse Bronze Light for bronzer. And then my lipstick is ColourPop Ultra Metallic Lip in Zebra. My lashes are BH Studio Pro in 202. If you're new here, you can join the Bayrito family and subscribe. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.